All right, let's delete the default cube and start by creating a sphere. Shift A, the sphere. Right click, shade smooth, control, control one two to apply some subdivision. Move it up a little bit. Now let's switch to shading. Here I decided to change the environment. This is not a part of the tutorial, but I included it so you can follow everything. But I can explain everything. Duplicate the background. One will be uh, for the uh, HDRI that I'm going to use, and one just for the background color. I don't want the HDR image to be uh, visible in the background. I want to choose a custom color for my background. This is all I'm doing here. Yep, and now I can change the background color to my liking without affecting the um, lighting on my object and also the reflection. Let's go back to object and let's create new material or, or use the material with the default cube. We will name it, give it whatever name you want. Let's add a nice texture. Shift A uh, and ask for search. Control T and click. Uh, you need to enable the node wrangler to have this thing work. So control T and click over the noise texture. It will automatically create a mapping and a texture coordinate. Now I'm adding a color ramp to have more control over my texture. This will be uh, the information for the uh, particles, static particles that I'm using. Static drop, water drops. Alright. So you can tweak these settings until you get something like water drop. Water drops. I duplicate the color ramp and linked it with the noise texture. So I have the same information. I want to use the same information to give it a uh, roughness. Here I'm adding a bump node plugged into the normal maps. And don't forget to save. Right. Now we have this information and it doesn't look like water drops at all. I was searching for a solution but I really couldn't until I s accidentally changed uh, yeah I, I used also a curve I thought curve would work but it didn't work so I uh, didn't use that and I accidentally changed the distance value to something very low then it looked like water drops <laughs> it was an accident but uh, Thank goodness it happened. I mean, it was by accident. I don't know that's what the uh, distance uh, thing does. I went back to the color no uh, color and that I duplicated. This will be the information for the roughness. I will mix it with other textures and other, uh, you know, noise textures. But for now, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, give the water drop more reflection and give the surface more roughness so plug it into the roughness trying to organize myself a little bit right, shift shift control and click over the principal BSDF so you can see how your material looks like decide to change the color give it more uh, you know 
because it was it was boring, <laughs> so I wanted to give it some colors. All right, now we are done with the um, static part, uh, static uh, water drops. So I wanted to organize it by adding a frame. Resize the frame until it fits, and rename it. I named it uh, static water drops because these water drops won't be animated. Now I duplicated everything and used the same thing for the uh, animated water drops, except that I will give it some distortion and give it some crazy stuff. Whoa. I duplicated the uh, oh sorry I duplicated the noise texture and this will uh, uh, I will use this the noise texture to give some distortion with the water drops that are going to be animated so they don't go go down straight they uh, like move left right here I'm organizing myself I didn't feel comfortable so I divided the the scene in two the left I have the node editor and the right I have the 3D viewport. I'm adding here a um, mix RGB. I kept it to mix but be sure you turn it to add. I will do that later but I forgot to do it right now so just telling you to do it right now. <laughs> Alright, here I'm duplicating a mapping that I'm not going to use. I was confused a little bit, so I thought uh, I needed it, but uh, I did not. So don't duplicate this uh, mapping. I used UVs. Because uh, I had uh, clean UVs. You know, the. Uh, Contains some seams, but uh, uh, it won't be visible <laughs> if you don't look at it. All right. Here I'm changing some, uh, you know, scale of the uh, texture to make it look uh, stretchy, <laughs> um, like falling water drops, not falling, like uh, moving onto the surface. Um, now, uh, now I applied the uh, distortion here, but it lo didn't look very good, so uh, I decided to distort it only on the x-axis. To do that, I created a uh, um, what we call it, uh, combine XYZ and separate XYZ. Actually, separate and combine, but uh, anyways, so we combine them and separate them. And we use only the X, um, the X axis, or, yeah, to distort the uh, texture. I kept the Y and Z plugged that directly and did not change them at all. Only the X axis I will use the uh, uh, what do you call noise texture to distort the uh, uh, the image in the X axis. <laughs> Here I uh, made a mistake. I had to move this. RGB, mix RGB away and do it after or actually before so mix the vector the texture corner with the noise texture and plug it in the, into the X uh, axis <laughs> now plug it into the vector and now we have distortion only the X axis don't have some, you know, uh, Z, uh, Y, or Z distortion, because it won't be logic, but at least in this case. All 
when I try to give it more distortion, the uh, the image moves from its uh, uh, position, and I don't like that. So we need to add another mix RGB. A mix RGB. Thank you. And we change the uh, mode to uh, subtract and not the screen. So I made a mistake again. So this one needs to be subtract and this add. I will change that right now. Okay. Subtract and the this one add. Come on, please change it. There you go. Alright, now we are good to go. As you can see, the uh, texture is in the place and we are adding distortion in the x axis. Alright, now keep tweaking to your liking. If you want to have some large par uh, particles, large water drops, uh, simply uh, do whatever you like, whatever looks good for you. Now it's time to mix the um, the this these information together: the static water drop and the animated water drop. All right. So uh, I added a mix RGB and used add. This worked very well because. Because we the, the colors are fully black and fully white, so uh, now I added a frame again for organization. I mean for organizing. <laughs> um, make it easy to understand what's going on. Named it animated water drop. Duplicated the color ramp, and I want to use same texture that we created for the animate water drop to use it as well for the roughness so mix, mix these two as well because the surface will be a little bit rough than the uh, uh, water drops I used overlay to mix them control shift click over the principal BSDF to see the results that we got it's good except that uh, we need to animate. So I added a uh, timeline. Okay, took this to zero and hovered over where we have the uh, location here. We pressed I and then went all the way to the end, 250 frames, and gave it a value of 0 0.2 and pressed I again. And now we have a animation. I just want to point out that the uh, we're using um, the uh, animation is not linear, so we want to do that. I, I forgot to do that, so it's not really important. But here I added a mix RGB and also added a Musgrave texture. and mixed it with the um, roughness information that we got before because I want to give some, uh, you know, randomness, uh, random, <laughs> what the heck, randomness, there you go. Alright, so tweak some settings, some values, scale, I figured out that I had to use another texture, another mapping used the uh, I used UVs I thought it would work but I saw a disgusting seam and changed my mind there you go this is disgusting look at that seam so I thought why not using the object coordinate and change the scaling of the uh, z-axis 
is the one that we have to change to 0 0.02 or something very low to make it look stretchy on the sides as, as if we have some you know variation in the roughness value in the side of the sphere as if, as if you've got some water sliding uh, in the side of the sphere Cross should click on the possible PSDF to see what we got I don't really see the roughness value that we gave it didn't appear very well so I wanted to give it more contrast I will add a color ramp for that after after changing the scale and some values there so I get a color ramp shift A S and search for color ramp and wanted to give it some contrast I will change it to grey and do some crazy stuff, but I I will end up using black and white, like uh, no grey value. Again, it didn't. I don't like it. It didn't appear. It appears as the, as if the surface is very reflective, and I didn't like that. Again, onto black, fully black, and fully white. I liked it a little bit. Yeah. Make it switch it the white and black. Probably worked a lot better. Yep. And decided to change to a metallic material. And color to blue. Bright blue. So it looks like a crazy uh, I don't know, alumin aluminum or I don't know chrome material. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope uh, you learned something. And take care.